Daniel, you are coordinating the MAS project, a large EU-funded project with 24 partner institutions in 16 countries all across Europe. Uh, what does MAS stand for? Well, last month I was contacted by a journalist who asked me if there is life on Mars. I couldn't answer this question. In our case, Mars is an abbreviation. It stands for Managing Aquatic Ecosystems and Water Resources Under Multiple Stress. So it is a research project about water here on Earth. Multiple stress? What does it mean? It means that humans are affecting rivers and lakes in various pathways, for example, by damming, by polluting or by heating. So why do you focus on multiple stress? In former times, some rivers were so heavily polluted that almost no fish or other animals survived. These, let's say, drastic forms of pollution have largely vanished, at least in Europe. Nowadays, the, the effects of human interference are much more subtle. It is a complex mixture. A mixture of what? Still pollution with many substances, habitat degradation, for example, by channelization, water abstraction, for example, for agriculture or power generation, and change of water temperature, for example, again, by, by uh, power generation or by climate change. Okay, I understand it's a mixture or sort of cocktail of stresses. How does it affect the rivers and the lakes? Well, first, it is affecting the organisms living in rivers and lakes directly. And these organisms, they are very often responsible for functions, for example, for the meta flow between water and land. And these functions, they mediate services the ecosystems provide to humans, for example, the provision of clean water or self-purification or the provision of fish. And all these three components, the organisms, the functions, and the services med mediated by the functions, they are affected by stress. This sounds like complex relationships between all these different components. How will you address them in the MAS project? We will work on three scales. On a small scale, we will perform controlled field experiments. On a catchment level, we will mainly perform modeling, model studies, where we will try to link stress intensity uh, to the biota. And this will also be done on a European scale, but uh, with other methods. So let's start with the experiments you are planning. How can you simulate multiple stress in an experiment and how can you measure the response of the ecosystem? Well, that's the advantage of a European project. We can combine facilities of many institutes across Europe. In case of lakes, we are mainly using mesocosms, which are either large tanks, which are mimicking lakes, or enclosures in natural lakes, and we can there manipulate, for example, the nutrients uh, or also the temperature. In case of rivers, we are using artificial channels where we can also manipulate, for example, flow and habitat conditions and also water temperature. Water temperature, that sounds interesting. Uh, are you heating up the water? Are you cooling it? No, we are taking water from a nearby lake. And this is either water from the surface, which is relatively warm, or water from the deep soon, which is relatively cool. Ah, I see. So let's move on to the catchment scale. You can do experiments in a catchment of, let's say, 1,000 square kilometer, correct? True, that's impossible. Here we are mainly using models, which simulate, for example, the effects of climate change or the effects of changing land use on, for example, flow or nutrients mm -hmm. at rivers, and we can then link this up to the biota or to the ecosystem functions. Which stresses do you actually then include into your models? This varies with region. In Northern Europe, we are mainly targeting flow alterations and temperature alterations. In Central Europe, we are mainly addressing habitat alterations and um, pollution by nutrients. In Southern Europe, we are addressing everything which is related to water scarcity. Okay. The most general scale you will address is Europe as a whole. How will you approach this large scale? Here we will benefit from a large amount of data which have been sampled over the last years, mainly for the implementation of the Water Framework Directive. And with these data, we hope to establish large-scale relationships between stress intensity, between the biota and the ecological status, and the services the ecosystems provide to humans. You mentioned the WFD, which often has been described as a bureaucratic monster. Is it true? I don't think so. Though it is certainly a very complex directive, but the, the topic, the Water Framework Directive, is addressing 
is quite complex. It is essentially about multiple stressors and there are no simple solutions for this problem. Okay, so the WFD is in force for more than a decade right now, actually 13 years. What has it achieved? Well, mainly it initiated change in the way water managers think. They are nowadays much more trying to solve water management problems within a catchment and not within administrative borders, so it fostered cooperation. Second, it greatly increased the quality of data which are available about rivers and lakes in Europe. And third, it initiated many res restoration activities. Let's talk a bit about restoration. Isn't the WFD and also the MAS project addressing luxury problems? I mean, European citizens nowadays have access to clean tap water and also can access almost all rivers and lakes without any danger. So is restoration compared to, for example, the economic crisis and the financial problems afterwards really that urgent in Europe? Well, it's, it's certainly a matter of perspective. Compared, for example, to the heavily polluted rivers three or four decades ago in Europe, we still might talk about luxury problems, that's true. On the other hand, I think that we as a society have increasingly recognized the value of natural rivers and lakes, the services that they provide to humans, for example, for recreation, and also of the biodiversity they are supporting, which is fascinating. And I think, though there might be different priorities, it is a kind of common sense that these values are worth being supported. Okay, thank you very much for this interview, Daniel. Thank you.